Hey, this is John Tierney, and I'm doing my project on 4D printed materials, uh, more specifically the types of filaments utilized in 4D printing and their product applications. So briefly, I just want to introduce what 4D printing is and compare it to 3D printing. And then I also want to show different applications of 4D printed materials. And then I'm going to demonstrate towards the end an analysis on a type of filament used in 4D printing. So essentially 4D printing is just an extension of 3D printing. They both utilize the same process, additive manufacturing, and that's just creating an object by building it one layer at a time. Um, the main difference is the type of ma uh, material used. So for instance, in 4D printing, you have these smart materials as filament, and smart materials are materials that can change their shape or properties in response to different external stimuli. Here are the different types of filaments used in 3D and 4D printing. The first two are more 3D based and the last two are more 4D based. So PLA is the most common type of filament used in 3D printing because of its ease of use. Then we have ABS, which is a little bit more durable than PLA, and then PETG and nylon, which are the most durable and chemical resistant. Composites are basically like a material booster pack to thermoplastics. So for instance, adding carbon fiber to thermoplastics can increase the range for operating temperatures, and it can also improve the predictability of a material's behavior. Um, shape memory polymers are just materials that can revert to its original shape. Um, so essentially they're reversible. And then hydrogels are primarily used in biomedical applications, and they can be influenced by factors such as temperature, pH, ion concentrations, and solvent type. And then here are some of the examples of the types of applications 4D printing is utilized in. So as mentioned, for, uh, biomedical, at least in targeted drug delivery systems is where you see that uh, hydrogel element the most. And then for aerospace, at least in the context of morphing wings, you'll have a metal-based alloy used as filament for 4D printing. And morphing wings are just these uh, drone wings that can bend up to 20 degrees in response to different external stimuli. And here it will improve the uh, flight's efficiency. And then construction and consumer goods are essentially the same in the aspect of self-assembling structures. And then fashion for shape-changing garments. Um, an example of this includes a specific type of material that's 40 printed that can compress when exposed to a lower temperature. And then there's also on an accessory basis, one that can change color when exposed to different um, types of light. So the specific type of filament I wanted to look into was nitinol. And nitinol is primarily composed of nickel, nickel and titanium, and it's a shape memory alloy. And its properties include super elasticity. And this just means that it, um, it has the ability to change phases when mechanical loads are applied to it. And it also has that shape memory effect where it can return to its original shape when heated. And its applications include biomedical, aerospace, and robotics. Um, I'll go more in depth in a case study related to heart stents later on. Here, I had a coil of nitinol, and I just wanted to demonstrate its um, different phase transitions when it's exposed to different temperatures. So here I have this nine millimeter in length coil of nitinol. It's about one millimeter in diameter as well. So here I bent it out um, and I measured a hot cup of water and I immersed that nitinol into this uh, hot cup of water and you can see it straightened out. And then I put it into cold water and here it returns to its original size and shape um, proving that it has that reversible like behavior. And then I just put it back in the hot water just to show its linear expansion one more time. And so here it had two main phase changes. Um, the first phase being the austenite. So the austenite phase is where there's a temperature above the transition temperature. Um, usually it's around 70 degrees. shape as long as it's retained in this 
type of environment. And when I say this type of environment, I mean it being in that hot um, cup of water. And then once it's moving from the hot cup to the cold cup, it'll undergo this intermediate phase change. And here you have the Martensite phase change. And this occurs at lower temperatures, much further below than the transitional temperature. And it, here it has this structure called BCT. It's similar to BCC, but here a stretch occurs in one direction. Um, since the molecules are deformed, and by that I mean the there are deformations in this phase, the nitinol can easily be bent um, and it can retain its bent like shape for a period of time as long as it's in this lower temperature phase. So some of the advantages of nitinol in 4D printing is that it can be printed in complex geometries and it can have precise control over shape memory behavior. This makes it have such a high um, demand in the, I guess, filament uh, market, at least in the 4D printing aspect. And then it also has multiple functions comprised into that single component. The main problem or challenges associated with nitinol is that there's limited availability of it. And it also has these post-processing techniques, which can take a long amount of time in order to get its shape memory behavior. And post-processing techniques just refer to extra treatments to enhance the material shape memory effects. And a specific case study that 40 printed nitinol is a part of is with its um, with hard stents. Um, rather than using traditional stents, um, these are typically deployed with like a balloon catheter and they require inflammations to expand and fit the artery walls. The nitinol based ones can actually autonomously expand once in the body and it helps reduce the risk of restenosis. And this is just when a coronary artery narrows down after treatment. Um, here you can see its impact uh, improved patient outcomes and it reduced the need for multiple interventions or I guess checkups in a sense. And then here are my sources.